Looking to score between band 7 and band 9 in the IELTS speaking test? Or maybe just improve your fluency? Well, this is a must-see video. Hello there, David from IELTS Teacher 365 here. In this IELTS mock speaking test, I will be playing the role of a candidate from Spain, Alejandro. I hope I said that right. During this test, remember to pay attention to my model answers, both the language I use and my pronunciation. And hopefully, you'll get some great ideas to improve your own speaking and get a higher IELTS band score if that's your goal. So, let's get started. Can you tell me your full name, please? I'm Alejandro García López. Thank you. And what shall I call you? You can call me Alex. And where are you from? I'm from Spain. I'm from here in Madrid. Can I see your identification, please? Yes, here you are. Thank you. That's fine. Now, in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk about what you do. Do you work or are you a student? I work. I am a primary school teacher. And why did you choose this career? Well, because I like children. I think they're a lot of fun to be around. And also because I like helping people to learn. So, for me... Teaching gives me the opportunity to work with kids and to help them in this way. Where do you see yourself in this profession in the future? Well, regarding the future, I see myself working directly with students. Um, I don't think I'd be very interested in moving into an administrative role within a school. Let's talk about where you live. What do you like most about where you live? Well, I think most of all, the fact that all my family and friends live in the same city as me. I think day-to-day -day life is more enjoyable when you're surrounded by the people who are important to you and who care about you. And also, Madrid is an extremely beautiful city, in my opinion. I love the buildings in the centre and the amazing parks we have. And there's so much to do here that I think it's almost impossible to be bored. So, is your home city a popular place for tourists to visit? Yes, definitely. I think as the capital, Madrid is a popular choice for many tourists because it has an interesting mix of historical and modern buildings. Also, the city boasts some of the finest museums in Europe, so I think it's a great choice for people interested in culture. Um, Madrid is also a very lively city uh, with a welcoming atmosphere and I think visitors soon notice this when they come here and they quickly feel at home. Has your home city changed much in recent years? Yes, quite a bit. Uh, I think the city is a lot bigger than it was, say, 10 or 15 years ago. Now there are a lot of big residential areas in the outskirts and they weren't there when I was a child. And, of course, many people have moved out of the centre and have gone to live in these neighbourhoods. Now, let's talk about writing. What different types of writing do you do? For example, letters, reports, emails? Well, for work purposes, I have to write reports about the students at the end of each term. I don't have to write much, but I have 28 students in the class, and so it takes me quite a bit of time. And I have to write comments in the students' agendas for the parents, for example, if I need to see them about their child's progress or behaviour in the class. Um, but obviously, as a teacher, most of the writing I do every day is on the blackboard as part of my lesson. Do you prefer writing with a pen or a computer? Well, that's an easy one for me to answer. I much prefer using the keyboard on a computer 
or for that matter, a smartphone or a tablet, because I have extremely untidy handwriting. I've never been very comfortable writing by hand, and sometimes using a pen actually makes my hand hurt, especially when I was a student and I had to do very long written exams. So yeah, uh, I'd much rather use a computer for writing than a pen. Do you like to write stories or poems? No, not really. Um, I suppose it's because I don't have much imagination for that kind of thing. I'm not very creative in that sense. I mean, I enjoy reading books a lot, but I don't have any inspiration to write anything myself. And to be honest, I'm not really into poetry. Um, I'm not sure if I've ever written a poem in my entire life. Maybe when I was at school, but I really don't remember. Thank you. Now I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say and you can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yes. So here's some paper and a pen to make some notes and here's your topic. Please don't write anything on the booklet. I'd like you to describe a type of music that is popular in your country. Describe a type of music that is popular in your country. You should say what kind of music it is, where people normally listen to or can hear it, what type of people normally like this type of music, and explain why you think it is popular in your country. All right? Yes. Remember, you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? Well, although Spain is a country with many styles of traditional music, I think if we're talking in terms of popularity, then I'd have to say pop music is without a doubt the most listened to kind of music. Um, and when I say pop music, I'm referring to Spanish bands and singers, as well as international artists, many from South America, where Spanish is also widely spoken, but also from the UK and the States. And regarding where you can listen to it, well, I think it's so universally popular, I'd say you can hear it just about everywhere. It's definitely the most played kind of music on the radio. In fact, some radio stations play it almost exclusively. Where else? Uh, well, in bars and nightclubs, it's very typical, probably because it puts people in a good mood and makes them feel like dancing. I know in the case of my friends and I, we often choose a club just because they play the kind of music that we all like to dance to. From my point of view, one of the reasons that pop music is so successful is that people of all ages enjoy it. I think this is why at weddings or family celebrations, you often see different generations dancing to the same songs. And I don't think it matters if the songs are old or new. Um, a good pop song is timeless and appeals to people from one generation to the next. And finally, in terms of my own country, I think pop music is very similar to the Spanish character. In general, we enjoy being with other people, socializing and having a good time, and enjoying the good weather. So this probably accounts for its success in Spain. Again, not only Spanish songs, but songs sung in other languages as well. Thank you. So, do you like this kind of music? Yes, a lot. As I said before, my friends and I often go to places at the weekend that play this kind of music, because it's what we want to listen to and dance to. And we have a better night when we're listening to the pop music that we all like. Um, I also enjoy listening to it in the car, and I have it on at home, and it puts me in a good mood and helps me relax. Thank you. Can I take the booklet and the pencil and paper back, please? Thank you. 
We've been talking about a type of music that's popular in your country, and I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related to this. So let's consider, first of all, traditional music. What is the traditional music in your country like? Well, in Spain, we have many different types of traditional music. It all depends on which region you're visiting. But on the whole, when people from other countries think of Spain and music, they probably think of flamenco, which is a style that I believe originated in Andalusia, in the south of Spain. Many people consider it to be more of an art form rather than a style of music. And of course, there are many well-known musicians and singers who have achieved fame in this genre, not only nationally, but also abroad. And how popular is this type of music nowadays? Well, I think in the south of Spain, flamenco remains extremely popular today, probably because it's very much a part of their musical culture and heritage. And although traditional flamenco may not be particularly mainstream, you can see the influence it's had on many Spanish artists and groups. It's quite normal to hear flamenco guitar rhythms in Spanish pop songs. And nowadays, there are quite a few young artists who blend these two types of music. So how important do you think this kind of music will be in the future? Well, I think as the world becomes more globalized and countries increasingly resemble each other in many aspects, things like traditional music will be what helps us to differentiate ourselves from other nations and also remind us of our own musical heritage. In the case of Spain and flamenco music, many tourists visiting our country want to experience it for themselves. And so live flamenco shows are now a popular tourist attraction. And also thanks to technology and the internet, traditional music from any country is now easily accessible to people all over the world. And this can help create fans of traditional music like flamenco in countries where people haven't heard it before and without the need to travel to Spain. Let's go on and think about the benefits of listening to music. Do you think that music can affect people's mood? Yes, without a doubt. In fact, I think it's actually a scientific fact. I read somewhere that when you listen to happy or energetic music, it causes the brain to produce a certain chemical. I can't remember what it's called, but it has the effect of making us feel happy or excited. But the article also said that the same thing is true of slow or melancholic music. It can cause feelings of sadness. And I think music can also help with stress because when we listen to different styles, for example, classical music, I think most people feel more calm and relaxed as a result. In what ways can learning to play a musical instrument benefit children? Well, as a teacher, I've read up on this subject quite a bit. It seems that children who learn to play a musical instrument from an early age benefit from it. And it can help them perform better in many other subjects, such as mathematics, science and foreign languages. I've also read that learning to play an instrument as part of a band or a group can teach children important social skills. It's a bit like being on a sports team. You have to work together to get the best results. Thank you very much. That is the end of the speaking test. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay, so how did I, I mean Alejandro, do? What band score would you give him? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and feel free to drop me a comment down below. And if you haven't already, click subscribe and the bell below to make sure you never miss the opportunity to improve your English and your IELTS band score. I look forward to seeing you again in my next video. So, until then, take care and keep practicing.